I, I understand that. And I also understand through social media that I really need to pronunciate uh, Jason Puckett, uh, you know, because uh, I, I just need to, I need to be better at that as well. Well, speaking of the that's you're talking about the the artificial intelligence, the AI. Yeah. So it picks it up and it, and when it spits it out, it when in Puck, it will. I mean, I, we can swear here. It, it will say fuck. <laughs> I don't know. And I, on that, on that video, I don't know how to correct that. It's funny because I'm going to get into a story about AI in a second. It's uh, it's Puck. It's uh, Chrissy again. If you're watching, listening, we appreciate it here at PuckSports.com, uh, YouTube, uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you find your podcast, just search Puck Sports. Please subscribe, like, comment. I I try to reply to all the comments, especially on the on the YouTube feed, which I guess is really the only place you can leave comments. But please like, please subscribe, especially on Apple and Spotify, because we need all that. We need that revenue. We need we need we need positive feedback. Um, so on the I have an, a story on AI in a second. <laughs> You're gonna love, <laughs> but the AI who builds that out when you you do those little short clips, yeah, it just it doesn't pick up all the stuff. I don't know how to correct that, but then it also like sometimes in the show notes it writes that stuff, and it will like mispronounce things or misspell things or just have like whatever the description is like like all jumbled around like it doesn't make any sense. You gotta you gotta correct it. So that that's it. You know, there's some good there's some good use of AI, probably some bad use, and I'm sure the bad people will find the bad use of AI. You know, one of these days. Guys like you and me are going to be replaced with it. No, they couldn't replace us. You can't find anybody on AI to replace us. I mean, how do you get these two good-looking guys like us? You know, you can't do that. Okay, so I'm going to take you to a story. Do you know what's happening next week? What is happening next week? The World AI Creator Awards. Okay are hosting the very first. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. The AI, artificial intelligence, beauty pageant. Oh, boy. You got to go look this up. You, you will look at these women. You will have no clue, zero idea that they're AI. None. I, I mean, I don't know how you would determine that they're AI. It's crazy. Who gets the awards? The cre the creators of the uh, models? Is that who it is? There's the creators of them, but also there are these two famous AI uh, personalities now. These women that are out on social media that have endorsement deals, that sponsor things. Oh. They're brand ambassadors. Uh, Chris, I'm, Egan, I'm telling you, you, you'll see these two women and go, first of all, they're good looking. I mean, they're hot, and then you're, you cannot tell that they're fake. This is the end. Do you remember Terminator? Yeah, I'm worried. This Puck. is happening. It's I'm going to Puck. happen. I'm worried, Puck. Nobody's having face-to-face -face conversations anymore with real people. We're real, Puck. We're real. We're you're going to get. You're going to get to the point, I'm telling you, where there's going to be someone, people are going to start dating. It's probably happening. They're going to start dating AI people or just computers. Uh, and that's going to be their loved one. And then someone, some weirdo out there is going to marry one of these things. Yeah. Oh, boy. Did you ever watch, uh, what's the show on HBO? Um, Westworld? Did you ever watch Westworld? I, didn't, I never got into Westworld, no. But you understand the premise of Westworld? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's going to happen, too. Uh, We're going to start having sex with these things. Hey, I'm, I'm worried, but I really am. I really am. I'm, Chris is like, I thought we were talking about the 100 days of Olympics and, uh, you know, <laughs> stuff that's coming up. I'm going right into AI sex bots. Hey, let's just be clear to everybody oh. that listens, Puck, or watches this podcast. Let's just be, let's be clear. Two, two weeks ago, you and I on this podcast said, ah, the women's college basketball ratings are going to be the best ever. Yeah. A couple days later, they were the best ever. Last yeah. week. On this podcast, and I know you talk with Ryan Divish, you talk with Brad Adam, you, you know, you talk with a lot of people about Mariners baseball, but it was this podcast here, Puck, where I said, everybody just slow down, just just relax, just just take a breath here. It's it's very early. 
not to be the the ear and the voice of Scott Service, but I, That's I what said you are. It, I said it right here, Puck. On this podcast, I said, just everybody, just settle down a little bit. And and what do we get? We get a Mariners team, Puck, that comes out. The pitching does what the pitching does. We get some timely hitting. Here they go. They're, they're, they're right in the hunt. Right in the hunt. So everybody just relax. When you have pitching like this, Bryce Miller has been absolutely incredible. Four starts, 1.5 ERA. Logan Gilbert, four starts, 2.33 ERA. And now now we need a little Luis Castillo to get going a little bit here. You know, uh, and, yeah. and when Brian Wu gets healthy and Matt Brash gets healthy and Santos gets healthy, everybody, you heard it here first. <sighs> On the Jason Puckett Podcast. Yeah, I just want to, I forgot to mention our sponsor, Chris Egan, is brought to you by Jerry DePoto and Justin Hollander. Also, with an appearance from John Stanton and Katie Griggs. Uh, it's actually brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. we got three great locations, uh, Sumner, Downtown Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Deal Pickle Pizza. Also, uh, you can book uh, their three food trucks. Hey, throw that thing back up there again. Three food trucks for catering, birthday parties, graduations, corporate events. Voted best of the sound two years in a row for best pizza. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, fatzackspizza.com. For those watching there on YouTube, Chris had a box there of Fat Zacks that he put up there. Well, Tasty, the, tasty pie, my friend. The wife was gone last night, Pocket, and she says, Hey, what are, you, what are you making the boys for dinner? I'm like, what am I making the boys for dinner? <laughs> what am I buying? This guy ain't making anything for dinner. <laughs> This is a funny story. So what are you making for dinner? I was like, what are you serious? You're We're gone. Not... You're out with your girlfriends having a nice dinner and cocktails. Yeah. We're going to go get some pizza and some chicken wings. Why would we? So does your wife do? My wife does this. So if, if I go out and do something, right? They're, 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 right? And there tends to be a, I feel like a tend of, uh, um, a little hint of jealousy at times yeah. where she's like, oh, you got to go out and do something. Well, then I'm going to go out and do something. So me and me and uh, the vampire Owen went to the baseball game this week, the second game against the Reds, and that's normally a Taco Tuesday night. So I'm sitting there, all right, the, the girls will be at home. They'll be watching the game, whatever they're going to be doing. Daughter gets home around 8 o'clock or so from uh, gymnastics, and they'll have a fine little uh, meal to all to themselves. I get a text like at 8, eight o'clock from, uh, from the beast mode, from the daughter saying, hey, can you, uh, can you bring me some uh, food home from the game? I'm like, what? I go, what, what are you talking about? It's, it's not a it's not a restaurant. I mean, I know there's food in here, but like, I go, it's the sixth inning right now. I, it's going to be cold. I go, there's, don't you have food at home? Didn't, mom's not here. She went over to uh, her friend's house. Oh. I, go, I go, okay, well, where's the dinner? Nothing's left. There was just uh, uh, leftovers in the fridge. And I said, uh, okay, was there anything in there? No, it's like, because I ate all the leftovers from the night before for lunch. And I go, she didn't make any dinner? No. And I go, see, this is what they do. With, when yeah. we're gone, they're just like, you know what? Free party for us. Yeah. We'll just take off and do whatever we want. So I had to go and buy her. She goes, just buy me a hot dog. I had to buy her a hot dog in like the sixth inning. And just sit in my pocket until I got home at like nine. She, you know, like a, like a trooper. Put her in the microwave and ate it. But, I mean. Come on. Oh, wait. The best thing when the wife's gone the night before and you get to take the boys out for, for dinner, Puck, is I get to make lunch for his school lunch the next day. So we, we buy a little extra pizza. We, a know good, that, well, I mean, we know that's going into the you don't wanna you don't you don't wanna have to sit there and prepare something in the morning. It's a good it's a good call on your part. Good call well done. That's what I, every every husband, every father should do. Father of the year there, Chris Egan. Well, I do get jealous. I look back to my fifth and sixth grade years, and I had a buddy named Ryan Lakin who he would have leftover pizza like four out of the five days of the week. <sighs> Just open that out of the aluminum foil. There's the big Godfather's combo slice of pizza, and I'm just like sitting over there with my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My my mom's put way too much jelly in there, and you can for the see hundredth the day in a row, you had the same damn sandwich. And I'm looking over at him, just munching down that combo slice of pizza, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And then, oh, I got an orange. Great, mom. Thanks. Uh, you know. <laughs> Let me ask you a question here, and I'm sure I can find it. Are are there Godfather pizzas establishments still around? The last one I saw, Puck, was one in the beautiful city, the beautiful city, 
of Parkland and Spanaway. I'm yeah, not quite okay. sure. It's, it seems like it's right on the border of the Parkland Spanaway border. Uh, yeah, right near the uh, the Spanaway Lake Golf Course, which is not oh, a bad so. golf course. Great the track. Hole, the home of Derek Cope, NASCAR driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I vaguely remember him. I do. I do remember him. That is the last Godfather's pizza that I've I've ever. Uh, well, it's it's no Fat Zach's pizza. I'll tell you that. <laughs> FatZach'sPizza.com. Book your graduation parties. Uh, voted uh, the best pizza in the sound for uh, many many years. FatZach'sPizza.com. In fact, I was talking to Zach the other day, and he was uh, cause we were trying to get him to do something here in the summer, and he was like. Oh man, I'm I'm slammed with weddings. Bunch of wedding. We're catering a bunch of weddings. I'm like, that's wow. awesome. Like, that's a great, like, if you think of like everyone goes out for a wedding and like the fancy food and all this stuff, right? You know, what it's a steak or what whatever they're gonna serve at a wedding. Grilled like, it, veggies, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know what I want? Because I'm not there to eat. I am there to drink myself into a stupor and sure. have fun. But you know what I'd really like to have, because I'll have it later once, you know, the wedding is over, is pizza. So yeah. why don't we just start off with pizza? So it's a great idea. Fatzax.com. Uh, uh, if you have a wedding coming up this summer, uh, they may have some time. He says he's slammed, but uh, they can cater your wedding. Speaking of weddings, I've always I've thought about this one. I know you. I know this has been brought up for you, and I, I guarantee you have a thought on this one. What about kids at weddings? Puckett, it's a great question, and, and I need I need your help. I'm going to be honest with you because I don't, I'm going to I want to talk this through with you. Because you have one we, coming up, right? We have a wedding coming up in late August. Uh, my beautiful daughter representing her today with the Portland State uh, Portland State sweatshirt. Her her uh, finale uh, tennis season is coming up as we speak, but she's getting married to a great guy, and they have a lot of family and friends that have little ones, little kids. Time, hey, time out, time out, yeah. time out. Do do we? It's just you and me. Do do we really like him, or do we just have to say that? No, we really do like him. Buddy. Okay, all right. He's Continue. A Continue. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. But there's a lot of people on the invite list that have kids, and you know, I my wife was like, I'm not sure. We you know we want all these kids running around, and I said, Well, let's hold there. This is not your <laughs> wedding. This is not my wedding. This is our daughter's wedding. So I think we kind of have to. I'm just talking this through, but my, my thoughts, Puck, is we just really need to check with her and mm -hmm. uh, her, her fiancé. If that's somebody they, I mean, if these kids are special to them, then I think you got to have them there. And here's the other thing, Puck. I don't think if you're going to invite kids, I don't think you can all of a sudden say, hey, let's invite Puckett's kids. Uh, let's say, you know, Jason Puckett, you know, the whole family. Sure. And then not invite somebody else's kids because then people start talking at the wedding and then you got then you got more drama i think once you open up the door to all kids once you open up the door to kids allowed at wedding now we're it's it's disneyland yeah okay you've got to open it up to everyone unless you want to do like a disneyland ride and just have one of those height charts <laughs> and if you're not tall enough you don't get to come into the wedding and you got to just sit in the parking lot. Have you thought of that idea? Well, I right now I did, and I think it would be awesome to have a, a height chart outside the wedding. And then, what you know, you, I you think don't you make it, you're up. I think just for, for giggles, you should just find one and have it. And as the kids come up and be like, oh, Johnny, sorry, he can't come in. Just, just, to, just to screw with them. <laughs> just, you know what's hilarious about these height charts? When you think about it, think back never, to the days of Disneyland. These height charts are there for health and safety reasons. Like, if your yeah. kid's not big enough, we don't want him on the ride because he could get thrown out of the ride and he could be injured. What do we do as parents in America? You know what? Our kid's bigger than this. Uh, could we can we get him some bigger shoes? We're gonna, you know, <sighs> set, get on your tippy toes. We're going to oh. find a way to get him on that Raiders of the Lost Ark ride because – our kid's not small. Can I remember the last time we were at Disneyland, and and and, and Owen was, I think, a, uh, was a little was too short for a couple of rides. And I mean, you know, we're a hundred yards out. I'm like, get on the tippy toes now, get on them now, <laughs> right now, right now, like yelling at him. And you know what? I mean, some of those maybe at Disneyland they'll they'll be a little bit more strict on it. You get to the to the Puyallup Fair and those carnies. Oh. I oh. mean, there, there could be a two year old and you know five feet below the line and be like good to me go ahead 
Pretty good. <laughs> that guy doesn't care or gal. I with swear. the you know, with the American flag tattooed down their left arm. They're they they do not give a they don't I give still a crap. remember a carney puck. I remember a carney pulling a kid out of the the thing where you jump in the balls. You know, you know that line where you jump in the balls? Yeah, I think there's and a lot the of kid, violations of going on in there. Oh, the kid's coming out of the balls crying, wearing those Osh Gosh Begosh overalls. And <laughs> and obviously the kid peed his pants because you could, and the carney's pulling him out. <laughs> and it's like pee all over the balls. So my thought is they're shutting this thing down for at least a couple days. It's shut down for like thirty seconds. All right, let's get it back in. I will I never was, after that let my kids go on one of those. Have you stories. ever been? And I'm not, you know, and I'm not disparaging this place. We went and and you know, if they ever want to be a fine sponsor, they can. Have you ever? You've taken the kids to Great Wolf, right? Yes, I have. Yeah, we were. I mean, the one, the lone and only time we have, and the only time we will ever go there. We, went, we did a one and done there. I mean, if you want to go to a place where everyone, most people there own a a souped up, heavy duty diesel type of massive truck with the big, big foot wheels and American flag coming out, out, out of the back. And everybody is wheeling in three giant size like um, coolers, uh, coolers with <laughs> everybody with with calf tattoos. That is your spot. So we go in there, and I mean, I remember we're in there for the first hour, and they shut down the wave pool because some kid pooped in the wave pool. Oh, boy. And to your story, it was shut down for five minutes, and they're like, all right, we got her out. I mean, you can see the person in there, like, scooping it up, like a scene out at Caddyshack, and they, you know, it's shut down for like 10 minutes. They claim they disinfected it, and like, away we go. And I'm like, okay. You, you say the calf tattoos. I, I've been to Great Wolf Lodge a couple times, and I've never seen so many uh, right above the buttocks area. Oh, the, the tra tramp stamp. I yeah, can say yeah. it. I'll say it yeah, for you. Yeah, a lot of those. I, I never know what's going to end up on social media, Fox. So that's true. That, well, that's probably going to be like clamp stamp. <laughs> we should do this where we have to just screw, screw around with, with AI a bunch. But I, I, you know, I'm telling you, this AI... We're going to have like the, speaking of the Olympics, you got the Olympics coming up. And when do, we have the AI beauty pageant we just talked about, when do we get to the point where it's the AI Olympics? Oh, boy. I, huh? Well, hopefully not. Uh, we are seeing a lot of drama for these Olympics. I think rightfully so. What's uh, the drama? Kind of, what do we got? Well, not drama, just I think maybe more excitement. I've never seen so much excitement for an Olympic Games in a, in a long time. And, you know, we have... We're coming out of the COVID games in Tokyo and China, where I think numbers were down a little bit. It, it right. was hard for people to kind of get involved in those Olympics. Uh, the Olympics before that uh, were in South Korea and in Rio, and now I think you're you're heading you're heading to Paris, and, and these games are, be, are are being very hyped up. We're less than a hundred days away now from the start of these Olympics, Buck. And uh, what's kind of cool is coming up this weekend. It, it gets really serious for these athletes because what we're seeing now is the trials. And yeah. honestly, if you, if you follow Olympic athletes, the U S trials are sometimes more competitive than the Olympics themselves. Oh, for uh, sure. We have three wrestlers from the uh, great state of Washington, Emma Bruntel from up at Mount Baker high school, uh, Claire de Cunho, Shelby Moore from white river high school. They're going to, uh, the Olympic trials for wrestling, and that's at Penn State University this weekend. And, and this is how this is how difficult it gets for these wrestlers. You have to win your weight class to go to the Olympics. That's it. So you take you take the 16 best wrestlers in the United States, you put them in one draw, and you, you have to place first to go to Paris. Hey. Uh, Even I mean, though, like the second and third or fourth is probably, this is what's great, is probably better or could potentially to be better than whoever would finish first in like, uh, you know, uh, France or yeah. Germany or Italy. Well, I mean, I mean, take it, you could, you could look at the, uh, the gymnastics uh, trials are going to be a little bit later on. Uh, and they're, they're taking like six girls and there, there's probably about 16 of them there that are just absolutely phenomenal. And past, them, past champions, you know, people who've medaled at Olympics who aren't going to make it. Yeah, so it, it's going to be fun, but it gets intense, as all the athletes would say. This is they they understand it's, it's real now. They have to perform, they have to compete. But I think 
One thing I did love talking to a few athletes this past week about Paris is, uh, and Puck, you're, you're a dad, you coach, you've got a daughter in gymnastics, you, you know, your son plays everything, and you've been, you've been with your kids all along this ride. A lot of these athletes that competed in Tokyo, and I go back to why is it so excited about Paris, is finally the crowds are going to be there. And not only the crowds are going to be there, the parents are going to be there. The parents were not in Tokyo with their oh, own kids. I forgot about that. They were not even there to watch their own kids perform at this level. And a lot of those athletes says it was it was just really tough. You you committed your whole life to this one sport, and who's yeah. been by your side the whole time? Your mom, your dad, your grandparents, and they're not there during this biggest mm. moment of your life. So I think that's going to be a little extra special is to have all the family there with these kids. Um, hey, hey Rook, let me jump on, on that. Did I see a story where NBC is going to put heart rate monitors on the parents? Uh, you may have, which will be, I think that's, am I making that up? Hold on. I'll, I'll look. Am I making that up? Or is that, was that probably something AI generated? I've heard that somewhere. I don't know if total fact on that one, but, uh, you know what here on pucksports.com, let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. (laughs) Yeah. Why, why not? Uh, and here's the thing, Puck too. I love you mentioned AI and the AI models of the year. I was out with team USA, the crew team. Okay. These are the, these are the modern day boys in the boat. Yep. Uh, they were training at the University of Washington. Six foot four, six foot five, six foot six. These these are like Greek gods jumping in this boat. Three of them from Harvard, one from Yale, one from Brown, three from the University of Washington. Uh, Michael Callahan, the head coach of the University of Washington, will be the head coach of the U.S. crew team. Oh, that's kind awesome. Drawing a little inspiration from boys in the boat. But for all the parents out there listening to this Puck Sports podcast, I'm going to tell you this. I, I love these stories. These are three of the, the greatest athletes in the world. One of them, Puck, was a cross-country runner at Bothell High School. I said, gosh, you must have been really good. He goes, um, there's a varsity team, Chris. There's a JV team, and I was on the team under that. The JVC. Uh, yeah, he was on the JVC team. And here's a kid that said, you know what? I wasn't very good. I tried. I I kept trying. I kept trying. I didn't quit. And then I found the sport of crew. Love that. And and this is a kid that didn't find crew until high school. Now he's on the U.S. Olympic team. There's a kid from New Jersey that went to Harvard University. His dad played college soccer. His parents wanted him to get into soccer. He loved basketball. That was his sport. I love this because I think the dad just, I, I want to meet this dad. And the kid told his dad, dad, I don't want to play soccer. I want to be in the NBA. And the dad said, well, I, I, I don't see it, uh, but we'll support <laughs> you on this one. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll help you out. And he goes, so he goes, I want to be in the NBA, dad. He goes, okay, well, you first need to make your high school team. He goes, well, I'll make that. He goes, well, if you don't make that, how about you do me a bet? You don't like soccer, so why don't you try out for crew? He goes, well, I don't even know what crew is, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the NBA. He tells me he makes the first cuts, makes the second cuts, gets down to about 15 players left. He gets cut. He comes home. He's in tears. His dad said, it's all right, son. No worries. You tried. That's all that matters. Now, why don't we try crew? Kid ends up trying crew, goes to Harvard because comes one of the best at Harvard. Now is on the U.S. Olympic team. Absolutely amazing. And there's one other kid, Puck, from Woodenville, Washington. Didn't really get into sports. His mom gives him the book, Boys in the Boat, when he was like in the eighth grade. He reads it. Finishes the book, tells his mom, I want to do that sport, mom. Now he's on the U.S. Olympic team. So I mean, awesome. some, that's what I love about the Olympics, Buck. Yeah. There's going to be hundreds of these stories coming up. That's out. a great – hey, what do they do? What do they do? And, hey, where are those Olympics at again? Uh, like, where where can I watch heard, them? Buck, it's not Pullman, but it's the Pullman of Europe, Paris, France. But how can I watch them? Is it on uh, – what is it on? It's is it on a streaming the service? Five. The Big Five, King Five, is, is the hands are a little dirty. I've been out working in the yard uh, already this morning. Oh, yeah, so working in the yard. What's – I'd like to see you working in the yard. Those hands are not are not do not look like or built for manual labor. Neither are mine. Tulips, a lot of tulips around the Egan house. Uh, what do they do? So, so in our household, right? I got a daughter that's going to be all just watching all the Olymp- or all of the gymna- uh, gymnastic stuff. So, like uh, Shailene Jones, when they promote yeah. her, like she ha- like she's been promoted everywhere. Yeah. Do they just have to put her on the team since they've been like she's in all the promos? You know what? I it's crazy. I mean, honestly, I, I and she has to make the team. That's why I'm getting a little nervous for her because everybody's like, is she locked in? I'm like, no. There's still the gymnastics trials. I mean, you have her, 
and Simone Biles, who they're promoting everywhere right now. Yeah. And you're thinking that, I, I don't know how the gymnastics world works, but gosh, you almost think like those two need to be on the team the way they're promoting those two. Uh, well, she's every time I'm, fl I'm watching King Five, it's Shillies Jones. She's out there promoting it and doing their little black backflip thing in front of the Eiffel Tower. So yeah, I would I would hope that she'd be on the team. Yeah, and these these trials, the gymnastics trials, this is how big these are. I, I, I've heard the the Olympics already almost sold out of tickets, but the trials are already sold out of tickets. The gymnastics trials are in Minneapolis. And Puck, here's the thing is you cannot get a press pass to this event. I mean, it's it's like there's you can't get in. Like I know local media in Minneapolis that can't get in. My, and the she, swim trials are in Indianapolis. They're at they're where the Colts play football. That's where they're doing the swim trials. How the I don't know how they get the, how'd they get the pool in there? I don't know how they're doing that, but that's what I've told. It's in that area over there. So it's just gonna be packed. The uh, my 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 daughter and, and wife were gonna go you know what? to. Maybe we're that's false information, Puck, because I don't know how they're getting the pool. How do you there. get a pool? In, what the, how do you, they just have like one of those? You know the you know the the family that had the pool when you were growing up, but it wasn't oh, the yeah. real pool. It was the you know the um the above ground one that was made of, like out of plastic. That yeah. one. When they I, I got a pool and you go over there, and you're like, well, that's not a real pool. That's just like a that's a bathtub. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's a bathtub. And it's just crap at the bottom of the pool. And it's at any moment that thing was going to pop and break all over the yard. Maybe that's what they're doing. And their grass is ruined. The grass oh, is ruined. grass is pool. ruined. Yeah. Dad's hammered in the corner on Rainier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my daughter and wife were going to go to those trials in Minneapolis. And so they ended up not going, but they had tickets. They sold their tickets and, like, made, I think they doubled their money on wow. it. Wow. Because it was just that popular. The tickets were insane uh, to fly there. The hotel was nuts. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's that's almost, those trials are almost bigger than than certainly what the uh, what Olympics are. Because those girls, in terms of competition, for the most part, they're the best team in the world. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Hey, uh, do you guys have this? Let me transition here. Yeah. I want to get a thought on the, on the Seahawks before we wrap this up. Do you guys have an issue down in the south end Uh we have this huge issue in Seattle. It is, it's an, it's a pandemic up here. Okay. And what the pandemic here is, is dog owners. And I have, I'm an owner of two dogs, two labs. I love them to death. Dog owners taking their pets to parks, not mm. dog parks, like baseball fields, soccer fields, and running their dogs all over the place. Did you see the story? What happened at Cal Anderson park th this week? A, I like a massive, a massive brawl because people are tired of the dog owners showing up there because Cal Anderson Park's a really nice park. People out there playing soccer and volleyball and all this stuff, and then dogs are running around crapping everywhere, and it just it, it escalated in this huge brawl. I got into it with some people a few weeks ago at Gilman Park, which is in uh, down in Ballard, because this lady was – we're paint – uh, we have baseball practice, and they're not supposed to be on there, and she's throwing the ball into the infield. Okay, after the parks department had come and dragged it, it looks beautiful. And the dog is just tearing up the infield. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Like, like stop. And she like, uh, uh, and I explained what's going on. I was nice about it. And then, and then I turned, I said, just can you please take the dogs off the park, please? Yeah. Especially when kids are out here playing baseball. She goes, okay. I turn around, I take one step. She, what does she do? She throws the ball one more time oh. into the infield <laughs> just to be like, double bird right back at me like you hey fat man f you and i'm like <laughs> i had lost it on her i mean lost it on her uh do you guys have that problem in the south end we i, I don't think we do because i think most of the parks say either no no pets allowed here a lot of them say that no well pets ours say it just people they don't, they don't care well, I mean, I guess in the South Sound, people read the signs, uh, and then uh, <laughs> so they act like humans, and they have yeah. they're they're decent people. Is that what you're saying? And a lot of the parks now they they transformed into the turf, so uh, I don't think they're they're letting the animals on that turf. You guys all. have dog parks down there because that's what well, people up here bitch and moan about. There's not enough dog parks. You know what? I think to the problem here, Puck, is we have uh, people that have yards. So, uh, oh, that's right. Well, you guys have a little, you guys have a little bit more elbow space down there. 
<laughs> we don't we don't have that i mean my neighbors like i can look at my window right here my neighbors literally are climbing over my fence peering into what i'm doing I, I and do i think have... they have a concern when i go out at night at 11 o'clock and i pee in the backyard and they're like hey, i don't know maybe you shouldn't do that anymore well how, how do i how do i address this one since we're on the touch subject of dogs uh and you know this this will end up becoming the most popular podcast of all time because people love dogs of course uh, and we love dog owners. I'm a dog owner as well. My dog's in the back where they're sleeping. Yeah. Uh, I've got a little front stretch in my front yard. Uh, it's grass I mow. It's grass I maintain. It's trees I own. It's my stretch. You're talking about the parking strip. Yeah. Uh, yes, but it's a pretty long parking strip. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. And it, it our area is pretty popular to walk because there's a, a hiking trail about a half mile up. Well, I'm finding a lot of uh, a lot of dog droppings on my not picking my it up. They're wow. not picking it up. They're wow. not picking it up. So I do have a camera. Yeah. I have a camera that shoots down there. I almost want to put a sign up that says, huh. "You know what? I appreciate your dog oh. uh, pooping on my lawn. I'm going to start I, as a thank you. I want to start posting these videos of you and your dog leaving me gifts." No, I, this is what I have. And I, I was well, st one step further. This is what we're going to do. You're going to take said pictures. You're going to print them out, okay? <laughs> okay? And then and then you're going to put a sign up there, like, you know, when the kids are missing, kids missing signs, right? <laughs> and you're going to post the pictures of these people, the <laughs> dog pooping, not picking up violators. You're going to post them up there. We're going to publicly shame these people. Because I we have the same thing with parking strip in front of our house. We are we are on a very popular stretch of people where people walk to uh to Sunset Hill Park, if people know yeah. that in Ballard. So a uh, very popular uh, stretch here of, and so dogs all day long. We don't have Seattleites pretty good at that. We don't have that issue. But yeah, that's that's terrible. Come on. You just gonna pick it up, right? Why wouldn't you pick it up? It's easy. What I what I don't like in Seattle, and they have this too, and the same said parking strip. There'll be a sign in which it's the parking strip, and it's just grass, and it's you know it's nothing, right? Or it's beauty bark, and it'll say, "Please don't let your dog pee or poop here." I'm like, why? What 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 what's the point? It's there's nothing there. You don't have anything there. Why why do you care that much? But eh, whatever. That's just but I think, thing. you know, when I, in fact, I'm not announcing officially on, on this podcast that I'm going to be running for governor in a few years, but uh, it, when I do, that will be one of my new state laws. If you don't pick up the poop, you, you know what? Your license is going to be suspended for. Oh, for... I thought you were going to go death penalty. I mean, that's aggressive. <laughs> I, don't think we're going, I don't think I'm going that. <laughs> That'd be a little much, be a little much public flogging. Chris Egan, new governor. What I'm bringing back public flogging. All right, Seahawks draft next week. You know what? Since I'm not in radio anymore, the yeah. thing I'm going to regret the most that's coming up is next week because oh. I want to go over there for one reason only, the and it's, the, it's just the media food. That's, yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking about sending the Seahawks a note, be like, can I just come over on Thursday or Friday just hang out? And why? Are you going to cover the draft? Not really. I just want to eat. I just want to eat, and I want to have the crab cakes and the whole – the whole meal, the whole dining room experience at the Seahawks headquarters. I would assume you'll be over there next week, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Well, this is why this is not an AI show, because you and I are real. Because I had the exact same conversation at work yesterday. I t a puck, we got Jake Garcia and myself. And our executive producer's like, are we sending you both over there? The Seahawks are only making one pick. And I go, hey. I go, well, yeah, why don't you have Jake do the pick, and I'll, uh, and I'll just kind of – uh, eat. <laughs> just, I'll just get the re. I'll, I'll just get the reaction. Jake will cover it. I'll get, I'll get Jake's reaction of reacting to the pick. And if Jake needs a, if Jake needs some <laughs> steak or some crab cakes, I'll it's go so him. good. It's I. I wish I wish all the fans could have experienced it. For those who don't know, the Seahawks, they're the greatest. They they open up. Their entire dining room for these just, you know, the fat bastards like me, you know, yeah. media people that come in there and the wonderful crew there uh -huh. that serves the team throughout the season, off season. These people get to stay there for these for these schmucks in the media and they cook for them. And, and, and it's wonderful. And it's five star stuff. And yeah. every every year. 
I think it's usually, I don't know what day it is. Sometimes it's Thursday or Friday. Uh, one of the days they'll, they serve these crab cakes that are just, I mean, unbelievable. Oh. And then one night's prime, there's prime rib. Uh, there it's just, it, it's, and then they have this salad bar that looks something out. I mean, it's like, it's a notch above anything that you would see like at whole foods. They have all these snacks everywhere, desserts, nut bar. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. They make people like you and I puck happy no matter who they pick because we're, we're oh, so care. good. You know, we're in a food coma and you're like, they, they've, the Seahawks have just selected Michael Towns from Montana State Tech University. Great and we're pick. Like, Great pick. Great, Great pick. Great pick. pick. Great pick. Great pick. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go get some more mixed nuts, and then and then I when I don't get experience is my good friend Hugh Millen, oh. Hugh who goes back and makes and I peanut and butter I would, jelly. I would document it every year. How many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is this person going to consume? Usually he's a good for about five and a half to six <laughs> peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and it's just remarkable because there's this whole other section that's like. This bread and peanut butter and jelly or almond butter section open for everyone. Oh. It is just, it's a fat guy heaven over there. And I'm going to miss it. And I'm thinking about it, just, I'm going to show up, I think, on Friday. Well, and just be like, I mean, this uh, is Jason Puggett, one... uh, radio here to cover the draft. Isn't this the number one sports podcast in the Pacific Northwest? Why wouldn't you be there? It was voted by the uh, BallardDigest.com uh, number one podcast in all the land. Well, uh, and... Pialp Sumner Chamber of Commerce, I think, just beat you number one as well. Pialp Sumner. All right. Uh, we will talk to you next week. Chris Egan's appearance always brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza, corporate events, uh, graduations, uh, birthday parties, catering. Uh, reach out to uh, Fat Zach's Pizza. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, buddy. Have a good uh, week. All right. We'll talk to you soon. As always, we promise to be better. No shoes, no dice. No. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak!